Dan Patrick Show brought to you by Continental Tire. Continental Tire Coach's Corner. He's the head coach at Alabama. I was watching uh, Training Days Rolling with the Tide last night, the Kobe Bryant episode. It's entertaining. You know, it's, it's completely different than the Cleveland Browns' hard knocks and certainly the way they practice there. What is said at, at a, a professional training camp or practice is a whole lot different than what's said in college and certainly at Alabama. But the uh, Kobe Bryant part of it, that was really interesting. Alabama opens up with Louisville coming up uh, on Saturday, and he's the uh, head coach of Al- Coach there, Fritzy. He's standing by. All right. Coach uh, is there. Good morning, Coach. Good morning, Dan. How are you? I'm not bad. I appreciate it every year prior to the start of the season you come on and not always breaking news, but I, I appreciate you keeping the uh, local media at bay, not telling them who your starting quarterback was going to be because you wanted to unveil that on my show. So, Coach, the, the stage is yours. Feel free to tell us the starting quarterback against Louisville will be. Well, I think the, the number one thing is um, respect for our players. Um, so I haven't talked to the players about that yet. Um, I have a plan to do that, so I'm not going to say anything publicly until I'm, I have both those guys are, you know, informed as to how we're going to try to play the game. So I don't think it would be fair to announce it, but I totally understand why you would ask. <laughs> <laughs> what does it come down to of who gets the starting nod? Well, I think in this case it's it's a difficult circumstance in that, you know, one guy has really played a lot of football here um, and had, had some success, and we've had some success as a team with him playing quarterback. And the other guy is a um, very, very talented guy who, whenever he's been called upon, has played extremely well, and both guys have done well, you know, in practice. So I, I think both guys are weapons um, that – should be utilized some kind of way uh, for our team's benefit. So the, the, the only question is, is which weapon do you put out there first? Do you enjoy sparring with the local media? Is it, is it, is it showing your sense of humor? Am I reading too much into it? Because it looks like you're having some fun here poking them. Well, really I am. Um, yeah, and, and most people don't understand, you know, when I first was a head coach, I was so nervous and anxious and all that, you know, with the media. I was always afraid I was going to say the wrong thing or, you know, I had to answer every question that they ask and, you know, really didn't understand how to bridge questions if, um, you know, they were sensitive. And um, and I probably made some, you know, not so good um, in it image for myself, you know, uh, because of that. And so I've tried to be a little bit more lighthearted with them. And sometimes I like to just poke fun and have fun with them. And, um, it may not seem like that, but you know, most of the time they're all laughing too. How long did it take for you to get used to those cameras following you around for uh, training days, rolling with the tide? You know what? It wasn't bad. They were, um, they were less intrusive than, than I thought. Um, they were very respectful of, you know, time always ask for whatever they could have access to. And, um, you know, I, I really felt like a lot of people were developing somewhat of a negative, uh, image of our program, maybe because of the success that we were having or whatever. And, uh, I, I really wanted people to see, you know, look, we, we try to do everything possible to create value for our players here, not just on the field, but personal development, academic support, uh, developing a career off the field, and as a football player. So all these things um, are important, and, and I think it creates value for players. And uh, I, I think a lot of the negative recruiting had gotten us to the point where you know the image was changing, and I wanted to change that. And, I hadn't watched these things, but I've got nothing but positive feedback from them. It feels like there's positive intensity. I, I don't know if that's by design, but practices seem that the, the yelling is not negative. Right. Is that by design? No, absolutely. 
you know, we, we want to teach. Um, when you teach players something, uh, I don't think you need to be negative. I think it needs to be positive instruction. Um, and, you know, the only thing the intensity brings is, you know, players have to learn how to, to maintain focus, um, a, a, a mental energy that allows them to uh, do things at the level they need to do them to create the habits they need to carry into the game. So they have a chance to be successful, whether it's technique uh, or, or assignment oriented. Um, so I think that's where the intensity um, is, you know, geared toward maintaining, you know, that, that mental focus, mental toughness that you need to sustain in the game. And, uh, but, but you also, um, if you, if you're not telling a player how or why he needs to do something a different way, then you're really not teaching them. So um, the combination of those two things are important. He's Nick Saban. They got Louisville coming up on coming up this weekend on Saturday. Joining us, the Continental Tire Coaches Corner. Did you call Kobe, or did Kobe call you? Oh, we wanted Kobe to come in, so we were we were excited that he, you know, would take his time to come in and visit with the players, and uh, he was fantastic. Um, you know, I mean, my goal in the whole thing was to get him to play on my noontime basketball league <laughs> when we start that. Um, but he did a fabulous job with the players. I mean, absolutely couldn't ask for, uh, you know, more straightforward forward candor. And I think it made, it made the players realize that um, one of the statements that he made when one of the players said, how, how did you score 60 and in your last game. And he said, I worked eight hours a day for 365 days a year, but they don't put that part on the ESPN. And it was, it was really kind of, you know, that great players work hard uh, and they, they invest a lot in being the best players that they can be no different than anybody else. And uh, I think sometimes we all take that for granted, but, um, well, you have to have the ultimate respect for him when it comes to being a true, relentless competitor. Is LeBron next? Um, well, he's still playing, so you know it's a little harder when those guys are still playing. We had Ray Lewis; he was great a couple of years ago, and um, so we'll be trying whenever he quits playing. But I think he's got a few more good years in him. Do you have to be reminded to smile to enjoy? Because I think sometimes the expectations are so high that we forget to enjoy or we don't look like we're enjoying. Does your wife ever say, you know what, are you enjoying this or show that you're enjoying this? Yeah, I can ask that question. Um, and, and, and I guess you know, I must, even though I don't feel like it, I must look like I'm not enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> right, because why, why else should people act? Uh, but I actually am uh, enjoying it. Okay. Um, and, um, you know, but it's challenging. And I think the most challenging thing is to stay focused on, you know, keeping the real thing the real thing. Uh, don't worry about all the external factors and expectations and comments that people are making and, um you know, what you're ranked and all that, because, you know, really your ranking, rating, all that noise right now makes nothing. Uh, you know, this year's team's playing Louisville, not last year's team. So, and it's a totally different team that has to go out and create an identity for itself. So to be able to stay focused on what you need to do to develop that and not get involved in all the rest of the stuff probably is the most challenging thing, you know, from a psychological standpoint to stay focused on the real thing. Did you enjoy this interview, or did you act like you were enjoying this interview? No, I, I enjoyed the interview. I, <laughs> I, I really did. You know, <laughs> like it or not, you know, you're you, you're you're uh, you've always been pretty easy. Um, you know, I, I like people who ask good questions, uh, and they're not trying to uh, attack you or get you to say something to create some newsworthy whatever, which. Uh, I always feel like you ask good questions, but, you know, you're not trying to get something out of me that's going to create some controversy. And once again, that starting quarterback against Louisville is? 
<laughs> Coach Epps. Oh, I, just gave, I just gave you a compliment and you just blew it up. Yep, that's me. Uh, hey, uh, good luck. Have fun uh, against Louisville. We appreciate your time as always. All right, Dan. Thank, Thank you, you, Coach. All right. See you. Bye-bye. Did you hear the car door open? Like he was getting out of the car, and I thought, yeah, interview's over here. Fritzy goes, you got nine minutes. I go, nine? Not 11, not 10, nine. I took two shots at it with the quarterback. Yeah, Paul. My favorite is as, as you told him, we're about to break news about the quarterback. You could hear as you start the question, he goes, <laughs> he has this little, which is like a huge laugh for anyone else. He's like, oh. <laughs> I thought, you know, I tried to help you. The, the local media in Alabama, I tried. Gave it a couple of shots there. You got you got Coach Saban's laugh there, Seton? See if you can. By the way, uh, Continental Tire Coach's Corner, Continental Tire, proud to be the exclusive tire of the Dan Patrick Show, no matter where you drive, what you drive, how you drive. Continental designs tires for what you do. For more information, visit ContinentalTire.com. Continental Tire, for what you do. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.